It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. Ha, it's Feedback Friday, and this has been a, a rough week. Uh, I'm not going to get into it. Uh, some health stuff, some personal stuff. Um, and I got Snorlax back there with Cthulhu. Uh, that's a little shout out to a buddy of mine uh, that had spinal surgery this week. So I thought it would be a little bit of a way of saying, hi. Well, he's on the mend. He sometimes watches my content. So uh, that's where we're at. Uh, Feedback-wise, it was a really good week. Traffic's been down the last few weeks, which I've enjoyed because after a few weeks of the YouTube algorithm making me miserable in the comments section, um, the high-quality comments were a nice change. Um, But... You know, obviously less traffic, less revenue, less recommendation. And that's why things like Patreon support is so important. So if you do like this content, especially the stuff that that helps people but doesn't do as well, help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it, coffee.com slash Leanna K. We are now up to three people on the wait list for Leanna Care Sessions. It's been tumult lately. It's been tumult. And the word tumult is fun, but um, not fun for the people going through it. Uh, And yes, if anybody's wondering, I mentioned It's Not Therapy in uh, Wellness Wednesday, but there was no It's Not Therapy on Thursday. I was too sick to do it. So we'll resume next week. The projection, the projection topic on It's Not Therapy will be next week. I was just way too ill. And that's why there was no no Twitch this week either. So chronic health conditions are a bitch. Um, so, but kind of a fun thing to start this week. I've got two pieces of fan art to show you guys. And one is from a guy. He is taking commissions at, to pay for martial arts lessons for his daughter. And so I told him, do a picture of one of my boss fight characters. I will show it. And he's done this amazing drawing of Beelzebub. So here's his handle, Crucifixio. Um, So if you are looking for commissions for things, I was picking her nose by accident, hit him up. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put his Twitter in the description box if I remember. I don't know how he, fa- I don't know if this is just completely by accident or how he found the bottom of this particular corset that I have. But I've actually got a corset that sewed a skirt on it. Um, I'm very impressed by that detail. I'm always impressed when people get corsets right. And this corset has proper hip anchoring. It's not like just crunching out your waist with nothing. So Buddy used references. Thank you so much. The second piece of fan art. Came from a typo I made on Two Women Talking, The Strength Episode Part 1, last week. And it sort of went off the rails because I spelled Jane Austen with an I instead of an E. And so I started making stone cold Jane Austen jokes and rewriting wrestling taglines from various mostly classic 80s taglines but I started writing them in Jane Austen English and then the absolutely wonderful large Souza of looking for group fame stone cold Jane Austen man and again dude did research it's the correct headline for Jane Austen so yeah this is cool It's fun when stuff like this happens. So if you want to give both those guys a follow, please do Lardasuda as Lartist on Twitter. Um, Yeah, Lars, I've known Lars for years. Oh my God. Um, The, I'm getting off track. Okay, so your comments. I want to start with the two women talking. Um, I'm so glad you guys like Song. I think she adds a lot. I really enjoy producing new talent and she is very clearly different from me in a lot of ways and I think it's (laughs) amazing because I've been trying to do 
a thing that shows the differing perspectives with women because too often, you know, articles are done and women all have to agree or it's one voice that allegedly speaks for all women and that's just not possible. And so I've been looking for somebody who offsets me in this way and, and gets the more girly girl stuff who can communicate well and is assertive and can take some of the shit that comes with, you know, being on YouTube and, and songs just excellent. And we joke around on Twitter a lot and it's fun. So I'm so glad you guys like her. Please report her, support her efforts as well. Um, so some comments from that starting. Um, Thanks again for your insights, Leanna and Song. Something you two said made me think of something. On the topic of weak men create weak male female characters, I wonder if possibly there are many who, yes, resent the ideal of a mentally strong male ideal like Superman, but prefer in response to have a character who's mentally and emotionally fragile in order to learn and teach themselves how to become more self-assured. Think Stephen and Mark in Moon Knight. Clearly, Stephen represents many things Mark wishes he was but struggles to be. Straightforward and honest with Layla, sensitive and emotionally empathetic. Stephen had just found out he was created from Mark's mind splitting first. And then with the scene or two, chooses to console Mark when Mark blames himself for his brother's death. You were a child. It wasn't your fault. Keep in mind, Stephen had just learned how he came to be. That's a lot of empathy and emotional selflessness on his part. Is this an example of a healthy in-between a tortured soul type in Superman to you? I think this, broadly speaking, seems to be what the team on the show had in mind. Perhaps this is a side of what characters made by some men can be, not toxic for the sake of it, but someone just trying and struggling for lack of trying to grow. Much love, even if you don't respond. Please do something like this again. Thanks so much, commenter. Um... I mean, I love Moon Knight. I think they did a really good job on the show. It's always a real challenge. And it's sort of interesting that they're going with the dissociative identity disorder on Bruce Banner. Though they, they haven't stuck a pin in that quite the same way. They just have him doing, you know, the DBT therapy. So maybe they're not going to veer in so much. But the whole smart Hulk, Professor Hulk from, you know, the comics, um is supposed to be the personas working together. Um, and Moon Knight sort of the same way. Marvel definitely has a much better track record uh, with, I mean, DC heroes are icons. They're basically the equivalent of, you know, Greek and Roman heroes like Hercules are super strong, they're this, they're that. Um, whereas... Marvel characters tend to be regular people who get superpowers. So it's more the type of character that would have been in a Shakespearean comedy as opposed to, you know, a Shakespearean tragedy. And they tell very different stories. And so I'm I'm enjoying the Disney Plus stuff so much because of that. And I'm sure Song will have her opinions on that. And so I don't want to do too many because she doesn't get to have a have a say in this. Maybe we should dart, start taking comments on two women talking. Uh, during two women talking, we'll, we'll select a comment and address it at the beginning of the next episode. What do you guys think about that? Um, I don't think that giving a character challenges makes them weak. And I'm pretty sure Song would agree with that. Uh, the next two women talking is going to be about women in refrigerator syndrome. So maybe more stuff will come out about that then. Shameless plug for the next episode. Uh, thanks for your comment. Uh, this one was interesting too. They're all interesting that I've selected. Um, the thing that underlined that the writer... The thing that underlined the, the writers of Captain Marvel didn't understand the difference between power and strength. Okay, there we go. Was at the end when the bad guy, I can't remember his name, does the whole, okay, you and me, no power. Show me you can beat me on your own thing. And she just blasts him into a wall. I understand the idea that Carl, 
Carol, I think, doesn't need to prove anything to the guy because she doesn't need his approval. But she hasn't proven it to the audience either. In a different context, this would be a villain move, blasting aside someone that challenged them to a fair fight because they're a coward that would never end a situation where they could, never enter a situation where they could actually lose. What was likely supposed to be a moment of personal strength, defying her corrupt mentor's hold on her by rejecting her need to measure up to his expectations, which she never actually did because even at the start of the film, she never seemed to care what he thought of her. Instead, it was a moment of personal a weakness because even if she didn't want to fight him she could have walked away since she had very clearly won but she had to use her power to silence him and that's very interesting because the most unpopular video I've ever done on YouTube ever was a similar issue I had with the Tony Stark snap and I see these issues at the end of series and movies as more the producers insisting on the big whiz bang special effects visual instead of ending the movie on a denouement. And I agree. It bugs me every time it does it because it has unintended consequences, right? It, it does defy character in some way or it, it trashes the, the message uh, in, in WandaVision, it's her going, I don't need you to tell me who I am. And then big witch fight at the end when Agatha had spent an entire episode dragging Wanda by the hair, showing her who she was. Uh, in With Tony Stark, what do we know with Thanos? He takes planets, subjugates them, destroys half their population at random because to make choices would be selfish and then conscripts armies from those conquered planets to fight for him. So there are large portions of Thanos' army that are essentially there against their will. They didn't choose to fight with him. They don't follow him willingly. They had to. It was like the draft. And so when Tony Stark wipes out Thanos' army's whole cloth. That is a war crime. He didn't have to do it. It wasn't heroic. Is it in character for Tony Stark? Yes, but it wasn't played with the sufficient ambivalence of the choice, you know? Because it's Tony Stark, okay, fine. It is sort of in character, but we were supposed to believe that Tony was mostly over his reckless weapons creator ego phase. And it was supposed to be this massive act of sacrificial heroism. But since he could make basically any move he wanted there, why not just wipe out the members of Thanos' army who are there by choice? Right. The rest of them will just scatter, wipe out the Black Order, wipe out, you know, the the people who are like true believers, hardcore, never going to stop fighting. But let the others go. Because they wanted the big whoo, sweeping thing. Right. I think Captain Marvel's the same way. They wanted the big blast at the end. But you are right. That it is a very petty thing to do. And that that is my that is my issue with a lot of female driven things is the way they show feminine strength ends up being kind of petty. And one of the reasons I absolutely love She-Hulk is because Jen being petty and juvenile at some times is not depicted as heroic. It's depicted as as petty. Like, it's a superhero in your fleabag era kind of thing. It's, it's very cool. I don't know where it's going yet. I haven't even seen this week's episode. But it's a nice change in terms of self-awareness. Fingers crossed that it'll sustain. So now I want to do a few from Manly Monday. Um... And because the comments are actually really good this week and I want to 
take one question that was very personal. Um, very interesting discussion. I've actually been thinking a lot about ego recently, in particular to do with my dad and how he interacts with the world. He's unable to accept any fault or error on his part to the point that he will deny events have happened. Any attempt to point out a mistake or even debate a topic with him, any attempt to have a discussion results in him locking the person disagreeing with in a room and shouting at them until they agree with his point of view. He actually found the idea of me possibly being autistic, turns out I am, embarrassing and something to be kept secret from everyone. Sadly, this has resulted in my siblings and me all having issues trusting the world around us. I wish there was a way to get past his ego, but it doesn't look like there is. I have so many Leanna Karras clients that have similar stuff. Um... I mean, locking someone in a room and screaming at them is abuse. That's not just ego. It's abuse. Uh, it is really hard. I can speak with certainty on this because I've lived through it to build, build up the things you don't get in the standard, you know, adolescent, early adult development cycle when you've got a parent like this. It can be done, but it is hard. And I mean, this would require a whole workshop to get into other than one-on-one. -on -one. So I just wanted to say to that commenter, there are people in the world who will not do that to you. That is not healthy behavior. It is normal in some circles because of intergenerational trauma, addiction, so on and so forth. But there are people that do not behave that way. And you deserve contact with those people. And that's sort of all I can do with it right there. This is part of the reason I do the work I do to try to help. Because I had to stumble through it all on my own. And it took me years. Um, one, one client this week in Leanna Cares, I'm so damn proud of him, did in months what took me years to do and that's the power of having somebody there who has gone through it and knows how to fill in the blanks that a uh you know a licensed therapist can't give you because they know theory but they don't they don't have the life experience and so I was really proud of him it was a really cool moment um leaving on one more comment it's just a vicious, vicious cycle with these egotistical men who expect to be coddled and spoiled by other women as well, not just their mommy, who more often than not is responsible for these spoiled, entitled brats. You see the same thing in reverse with obnoxious, spoiled, entitled women who were coddled by their daddies and expect all men to also cater to their BS. And yet another angle to it is often sexist women teaching their daughters to use and abuse men to get what they want for themselves. Everyone else be damned in the process. Same for misogynistic guys teaching their sons the same thing. Absolutely true. Another person talked about wanting to just sort of make gender a spectrum or doing away with the tug of war. And I do think we're all sick of it. I do. And that's why it's really important to talk about this stuff and talk about this stuff holistically. And that's why, I mean, as, a, as averse as I was to talking about men's issues, because it's not my experience, and as much shit as I have been given, and all the comments, I really don't think this is your thing. You sound like somebody's mother telling them what to date. Nah, 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 nah. All the haters. Um, I think it's worth it. It's worth taking the hits. Because I know I'm learning a lot. And the cool thing is someone will bring something up in a Leanna Care session based on a video and they have their own insight, but it's more long form and I can ask questions based on the video. So it's like this whole ecosystem that I think is really cool. And there's more I want to do with that. This is why I do Feedback Fridays. This is why I like to make it a conversation. Because for me, it's not just about making the video. In terms of getting attention, I don't like it. I'm an introvert. 
if I could get the feedback and I could do the community without sticking myself in people's faces in a heartbeat, just thinking about this is making my chest tighten. And it, but I do learn a lot and I do think it's doing good. And I really value people who take the time and effort and take the risk to comment in this way because we're we're getting some workable stuff this way and it's really really important so thank you for that and this is going to continue next week until then i gotta run i gotta go to my next session um help support this channel patreon support is greatly appreciated right now help support this channel become a monthly patron patreon.com slash leanna k or Three people on the Leanna Cares wait list. Three people. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.